How do you keep going on YouTube when you're not seeing the success that you want? My name is Erica Vieira and I am a YouTube strategist and coach having helped nearly 500 women behind the scenes since 2017 grow their YouTube channels. In this video, I'm going to be giving you five things that you can think about if you've been on YouTube channel for months or maybe even years, but you're just not seeing the growth that you want. This week, I had the opportunity to interview YouTube content creator Camille Colazzo. Now Camille had been on YouTube for years before she really saw any success. And I really wanted to bring her onto the podcast because she shares such a similar story that I know so many of you share. And she really had a lot of amazing insight into what to do if you feel as if your channel is stalling, but you still wanna be on YouTube. You still want to be on the platform and you know that success is in your reach. You're just not there yet. So how do you keep on going? I always knew that this is what I wanted to do. Uh, I started my channel when I was in film school and you know, that didn't pan out being you know in film school, I quickly realized that it was a boys club and I felt like I had more of a connection through YouTube. So I always kept coming back even though I wasn't growing. I mean, it took me, I think seven years or, oh, I'm sorry, six years to get to 17,000 subscribers, but I just, I liked the process of creating video and editing and just connecting with people. And I, I knew that I wasn't ready to give up. So if you haven't seen her interview, definitely check it out after you've checked out this video because she has a wonderfully inspiring story and I know you're gonna enjoy it. The first thing that you really wanna make sure that you have if you are serious about growing your YouTube channel is a vision. I'm such a big believer in having a vision for your life. And if you wanna be successful on YouTube, then YouTube fits into that somehow. And you need to incorporate that vision of YouTube and how it fits in with your life. Start visualizing what your channel is gonna look like, the type of audience that you have, the type of relationship you have with your subscribers. Have some kind of visualization that you map it out in your mind and maybe even write it out, but you have to have some vision because if you don't have a vision of where you're going, your subconscious, the, you know, whatever, the powers that be just doesn't know where you want to be. And so you don't have a path to get there if you don't have a vision, if you don't know what you ultimately want. So I'm a big believer in visualizing things. And if you really want to be successful on YouTube, you need to visualize your channel and how it fits in with your life as a whole. Number two thing that you can do is make a commitment to your channel. Camille talked about this and she said for her that once she made a commitment and actually she was forced into it because she was laid off of her job at the beginning of when COVID just happened and she was forced into this idea of committing to her channel and she says it was really just do or die at that point. She was laid off and she now said, well, I'm gonna just fully go full throttle into my YouTube channel. I also interviewed Hiram on this podcast and he talked about for him, once he made a commitment to his channel, that's when he was actually taking the actions that were required to actually see the success that he actually wanted. If you treat your channel as a hobby, even though you say you wanna be successful on YouTube, then YouTube is gonna treat you as a hobby. I kind of came to this pivotal point and I realized that I'm like, okay, Hiram, you can't, you can't be half and half between these two projects. You know, you either have to be fully in one or fully in the other. And I decided in that moment, even though YouTube was making me like 20 bucks a month, <laughs> yeah. I was like, you know what? I'm going to focus more on YouTube and I'm going to see where this goes and I'm going to set everything else to the side. You need to treat your channel as if it's something that you are doing full time, even if you're not. You need to put that level of commitment and energy towards your channel so that it gets you to where you wanna be, which is, I'm assuming if you're watching this video, is to be full time on YouTube. It's to not have it be a hobby. So you can't treat it as a hobby. The next thing that you should do or think about is really having a level of self-awareness. Be honest with yourself. If you've been on YouTube for this 
amount of time and you're still struggling, then maybe the platform just isn't for you. And that's okay. Not everybody has to be on YouTube. But if you're like, no, Erica, I love YouTube. I want to be on YouTube. Then maybe it's a self-awareness of the topic that you're talking about really isn't the best topic for you. Just because you're passionate about something or you love something doesn't necessarily mean that you need to revolve your entire YouTube channel around that. And I want to share with you a quote that I feel really reflects what we're talking about here from the author Scott Galloway, who wrote The Four, The Hidden DNA of Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and Google. And he says, don't follow your passion, follow your talent, determine what you're good at early and commit to being great at it. You don't have to love it. Just don't hate it. If practice takes you from good to great, the recognition and compensation you will command will make you start to love it. And ultimately, you'll be able to shape your career and your specialty to focus on the aspects you enjoy the most. So for Camille, she realized that after years of trying to have a beauty channel, she's like, you know, all these people were being successful on YouTube with beauty and I thought I could do it. But after two years of doing it, I realized Maybe it's just not the right niche for me. I, I do think, you know, it is possible for anybody, but we also have to have a little bit of self-awareness when it comes to the, the content that we're putting out there. Like for me, at the time that I was doing makeup tutorials, I I didn't have, you know, and this is not to like be down on myself or anything because I'm very good at other things. But at the time, I, I didn't have what, what it took to be in that niche. And having that self-awareness is what helped me try everything else, right? So I think there's a little bit of having the self-awareness to understand whether something is for you or not. I mean, we are multi-dimensional beings, and we might be good at a lot of things or might be interested in a lot of things, but that doesn't mean that you have to you know, necessarily go for that one thing you really, really want. It's also self-awareness with you really take an assessment of yourself as a content creator. Have an honest conversation with yourself and to say, you know what, I love this platform. I want to be on this platform, but something's not working, so I got to fix it. I know it can be very, very hard, but it's crucial if you've been on this platform for a long time and you're not seeing the results that you want. And the fourth thing to think about is are you truly passionate about the YouTube platform? So you might be really passionate about your topic and you say, okay, well, I'm really passionate about my topic, but in order to be successful on YouTube, you have to be passionate about making videos. You have to be passionate about the platform itself. And if the idea of creating videos or editing videos or being in front of camera, it isn't something that you love and you're not excited about it and ask yourself, maybe, it's not the topic I'm not passionate about. Maybe it's the platform that just isn't aligning with me and my talents and my qualities that I have to offer. Maybe after two years of making videos, you realize you hate making videos. You love the topic, but you hate making videos. And then you have to make some decisions. If you're in a position where you can hire out a lot of the elements, great. Not everybody's in that position. There's a lot of honest conversations that you need to have with yourself. And one of them is that, do you love the YouTube platform? And here's the thing, here's the good news. If you do, and if you say, I do love the YouTube platform. I love it. I love creating videos. I love being on YouTube, but it's still not working. Then maybe then it is the topic that you're talking about. Well, maybe this topic isn't the right topic for me, like for Camille. Maybe makeup is something she loved, but she realized it's not the right topic for me on YouTube. She's like, I love YouTube. I love creating videos. And I knew I had a passion for it, but all these different topics. And she also tried commentary videos. And she said, that just didn't just, that didn't work well for me. So she went through so many different types of YouTube videos and finally landed on one that worked for her and that worked for YouTube. And so you wanna have that honest conversation with yourself is it that you don't love YouTube maybe you just don't maybe you just don't love creating content and that's okay you don't have to or maybe it's just the topic that you love but maybe it's just not working for you on YouTube maybe you're passionate about YouTube and that's great that means all you need to do is figure out a different topic so if that's you comment below let me know and if any of these things are resonating with you let's have a conversation in the comment section and the last thing that she said that you maybe want to think about or think about doing is hiring some 
help, hiring some professional help. And for me, that's music to my ears as a YouTube coach because I believe very, very strongly in that. That is why if you ask any of my students in the boot camp or my private clients, I am brutally honest because I feel for me where I come in is to tell people exactly what they need to do what they're doing wrong and what they might not be doing that they need to do or making some changes that might be hard things to hear but I feel that it's my job to tell my students and my clients what they need to hear to see success. My goal is for you to see success on YouTube as fast as possible. It's not for you to be my friend. It's not for you to like everything that, that I'm gonna say. You might be at the point and say, I need some outside perspective. I need some outside help. I need a professional to help me with my YouTube channel. It's not enough to just go on a million different YouTube channels and watch them or listen to podcasts or ask your friends and family. It might be time for you to hire somebody. And you know, whether it's me or somebody else, obviously you have to connect and align with that person that you work with. I'm a huge believer in it. I have hired people myself for my business and sometimes it's one thing that they say where they know me personally and you know they've gotten to know me and they, and that one thing that they've said has changed the trajectory of my business forever and I'm forever grateful for that person and also for my decision to invest in somebody to help me there or to be a coach and that is part of the reason also why I include coaching inside of my boot camp I've considered actually taking the course portion itself and just selling that by itself but I knew personally where the true value and the gift of what I have to offer lies in personalized coaching and I know people can see such changes and dramatic changes in their trajectory of their YouTube channel and their life when they're able to actually get personalized attention, which is why I feel so, so, so strongly about that. So when Camille said that you can hire yourself a coach, you, mm -hmm. you should, it's absolutely worth it. Uh, I have invested in my education for YouTube. I've taken a, an interest in marketing and, uh, online marketing specifically. And I think it's been really helpful. So, you know, it's, it's good to, be yourself and, you know, kind of go through this intuitively. But if you can hire someone to mentor you and to coach you, I honestly believe is, is the best thing you can do because you'll, you'll skip that process and then you can just focus on actually creating instead of having to learn and figure it out while you're trying to be creative. I couldn't agree more. I'm like, yes. 100% because it's sometimes those little things that people say when they've gotten to know you and they've been able to speak with you one-on-one -on -one that make the biggest difference that can save you so, so much time. So has this been helpful for you? Has it given you things to think about? Because the whole point of this video is to have you start thinking about things maybe a little bit differently or reassessing where you're at right now. Because if you're on YouTube and you've been on YouTube for years but you can't seem to catch a break, then you need to have some serious conversations with yourself. And hopefully these things that I brought up were prompts to help you start thinking about things. Maybe take a journal out and start journaling some of the things that I've mentioned in this video to help you come up with a game plan to maybe course correct and change what you're doing so that you finally see the results that you want. So if you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments and like the video because it helps the channel so, so much. And I will see you in the next interview. Mwah.